Of course, the working class in the United States consists partially of retail workers, baristas, and other service workers, etc. Are they petty bourgeois? Are they small business owners? No. Are they bourgeoisie? Are they the, you know, owners of big industry and big capital? No. Are they lumpen proletariat, depoliticized workers? No. They are working class. And there are, what, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of them here in the United States. And what, we are supposed to abandon them? We're supposed to say, ah, you're not the working class, you know, that's silly. And why this fight over the distinction? You see this, this is pretty new, at least for me. I, I, I only started seeing this at about the time when Starbucks workers uh, started organizing and other fast food workers started uh, the fight for 15, um, things like that. All of a sudden, when all of these sectors that had already been organizing, I mean, SEIU, the Service Employees International Union, um, Unite Here, uh, the Hotel Workers Union, they also, uh, they will organize some service uh, workers. Um, like in LA, they had a bowling alley. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so I mean, they were already organizing in some of the unions, but when all of a sudden this uh, spark ignites and retail workers and service workers start fighting for more, all of a sudden this argument started to become popular. I wonder why. So if you don't think that they are working class, they're not proletariats, then please tell us, explain to us what class they are and what class they are a part of. In my opinion, we should be offering the exact opposite of this. We should be offering our solidarity with all of the service workers um, and the Starbucks folks who are organizing and fighting and struggling. That is how you build roots in the community. And if we can get people to fight back for their needs, uh, even retail workers and service workers, that is a net positive for all of the working class.